Hi, ladies. Good evening. Thank you, Coach Top, for the honor of addressing these young ladies. I remember being where you all are, eagerly anticipating the journey ahead with little to no mental limitation. And that's the way that it should be. I can say that as I dream big, and now consider myself to have surpassed the dreams I had as a teenager. There are some things that I wish that I knew, and that's what I'm here to share with you. I've gone through college at the Division I level. I've since earned my master's degree in clinical mental health counseling at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, where I did research in the area of collegiate athletes' mental health and served as an academic advisor and mental health counselor for college athletes on that campus. I currently serve as a team lead at Carolina Outreach in Charlotte. I work in private practice, mostly with teenagers. And this year, I took a leap of faith and started my own business, Kingdom Balance Living, where I offer personal training services and psychoeducation in the area of mental health seminars in churches and other community settings. So I stand here today with an array that includes very little basketball. Putting my sister through workouts at Davidson is the extent of my basketball involvement at this point. But I say that to you because what I want to speak into is yes, your careers as basketball players, but even longer lasting, your futures as young ladies, as students, as wives, as mothers, as business owners. So I will share with you all what I learned in my process and the things I wish I knew along the way. I wish I knew along the way, I had to learn to separate basketball from life. There's a saying that we have that ball is life. But as I grew and developed, I realized that there's ball and there's life. Now I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous. Both are very important and both should be addressed but a lot of times as athletes, we spend so much time and so much of our life devoted to the game. Wearing shorts, sneakers, jerseys, throwing our hair up in ponytails, getting driven from one practice to the next, being recognized for our on-court performance, being stopped and saying, hey, you're tall, what sport do you play? That we forget to develop healthy relationships, good academic habits, we can forget to attend to the things that matter most. We set ourselves up in a way that upon injury, upon the time of a career's end, we are unable to let this identity go because then we're left with a person that we don't know, a person that maybe we never grew. Plenty of collegiate and professional athletes get depressed because they never learn to embrace life outside of their sport. And while I'm a huge proponent of investing all that you have in what you do, it's equally important to recognize that what we do is not who we are. It's simply a part of who we are. So I would like to talk to the father in you, and then I would like to inspire the young women, students, business owners that you will become. So from a basketball standpoint, yes. Give it all that you have. Die for every loose ball. Run fast on every sprint. Be early for practice. Play defense like your very life depends on getting that stop. Compete. Push your teammates daily. Practice daily. Give the game all that you can. Work as hard as you can work. It's one thing to be a skilled player and it's a whole nother thing to learn to work hard. In college, everybody is good. Everybody was the best at their high school, but the players that thrive are the ones who work hardest and smartest. The ones who attend to their weaknesses to make them strengths. And the ones who build on their strengths to be reliable in them and produce what your coaches and teammates need. I'll tell you, I wasn't the fastest. I wasn't the most athletic. 
But in middle and high school, what I had was the discipline to work harder than I dare to say everyone else around me. The dedication that I had to make a thousand shots each day. That even after a high school basketball game, you could find me in the local community gym, making my shot, perfecting a new move, and reviewing the old one. I usually spent four to five hours a day in the gym. It was those moments that propelled me to the success on the court that I was able to have. Being a freshman starting on varsity, onto leading the conference in rebound sophomore year, assist junior year, and scoring senior year, to being able to break at the time Jordan's scoring and rebounding record. What I devoted to the game, the love and time that I put in in the midst of pains and adversities, awarded me great opportunities, even a full ride to college. These same dedications that I had to the game awarded me time on the college court. And not that anything will happen to you. I pray that it doesn't. But for me, it did. I was brought on to Western Carolina's basketball team to be the anchor that they could build their program around. By the end of my freshman year, I started getting sick. My body was not holding up well, and I was passing out quite a bit. By sophomore year, things had gotten pretty bad for me. I started off the year with a concussion. And by the end of that year, after several doctor's visits, I got my first diagnosis. Junior year came along, and I got another one. As I went to more doctors, they were searching for answers, and I spent a lot of time on the sidelines. Not what I dreamed. And I gotta tell you, had Bob been life, I was near death. Gladly, the wisdom that my awesome parents, sitting here at the table, and other athletes before me passed to me, and that I now pass to you all, is that life is more meaningful and valuable than the game. Although we love it. I still had what was most important for me, my faith in Jesus Christ, and that alone meant that life is bigger than my circumstance. My life and the challenges in it were bigger than me. So I developed my strengths and relationships outside of the court. I used this time to connect with the community in defining ways to develop a deeper relationship with my coaches beyond performance, and to support my teammates, strengthening connections that basketball alone never could. At the end of my junior year, I was ready to stop playing ball. I went to my coach to stop my career. My guess is that most college coaches wouldn't urge an athlete who wasn't performing the way that they wanted to to stay. But my coach gathered the other coaches and looked me in the eye and told me, Kristen, you bring more to this team than just your skill. Your personality, your leadership, your poise, and the way that you push through adversity is something that is valuable to this team. She told me that they would work with me to play as much as my body would allow. Now, even though I wasn't producing the way that I wanted to, my coaches let me know something powerful. I still had something to offer. And I stop parenthetically to say, for those of you that are not producing the way that you want to, maybe you're on JV and hoping to play varsity. Maybe you play varsity and you wanted to start or look at a particular college that hasn't looked at you yet. You still have something to offer. And so there I was able to grow myself even further into the leader I would be today. I was voted as captain of my team my senior year, even with declined health. They respected me because every rep that I could do, I did it as hard and as fast as I could. I was gonna be the first one across the line. I was gonna be one of the first ones to practice. I was gonna pound it in the weight room. And I was always going to do and stand for what was right. 
This is the value that I was able to give to the game and those around me. So what is it that I want for you all to know? That everybody's journey is different. That when you fantasize and dream about your future, there is a possibility that it can be altered. I want you to know that no matter how good you are, you are more than the game that you play. Your journey will lead you to some truths that you will have to discover on your own. My journey, my life, led me to this knowledge, and so that's the knowledge that I share with you. But your process is critical for your development and your purpose. Embrace your process no matter where it takes you. The way that you navigate it will determine your outcome. We can get so caught up in the future of who we want to be that we do not enjoy who we are now and embrace our process. Engage in growth. Enjoy each moment, each friend, each conversation with your coaches, networking, creating relationships that are valuable. Show gratitude to your family that is supporting you. Don't take them for granted. Basketball is not life. It's an experience. So I leave you with this charge. You're a daughter. Don't forget that. You're a friend, don't forget that. You're a student, don't forget that. You're players, don't forget that. Some of you are believers, don't forget that. You have something to offer on this journey. In all that you do, don't forget that. Thank you.